Hello and welcome to episode four of my story time series. Today we are going to talk about roller derby. And to be honest, for some reason, I feel really nervous about talking about this part of my life because it just brings up a lot of emotions. I played roller derby from 2011 to 2016, so it was already about four years ago since I've retired. And it was such a huge part of my life. It was a highlight of my life, but it was also so many crazy struggles and dark times wrapped up in there that it's a weird thing to bring up. And honestly, I don't talk about it as much anymore with new people that I meet, but it is something really amazing and cool that I did at one time in my life. I actually tried to go through my closet to find something from my roller derby skating career to wear for this video. And I really don't have anything in my closet anymore because I put away a lot of that stuff. I packed it away in storage bins and because it was a very sad ending to my skating career and it just kind of brought up sad feelings and I didn't feel good about wearing my old jerseys or my, my shirts or anything. So I either sold them, gave them away or packed them away. So I actually don't have anything out right now, which is kind of sad. But let's rewind and talk about how it started. How did roller derby come into my life? If we go back to 2011, I was still living in a smaller town outside of Vancouver where I grew up, where I went to school and I had a full-time job. I'd been at that job for almost eight years at that point. I was 27 years old, 26 years old and was really looking for some excitement in my life. I had just finished um, university and gotten a degree and I had plans to become a teacher, honestly at that stage of my life. But I definitely felt like something was missing. I used to play very competitive soccer for many, many years, running, cross country, and I just missed that element of my life. I just, I dreamt of one time playing for Team Canada in soccer and that dream just kind of floated away when I ended up going to school and you know, I just can't afford to, I couldn't afford to pay for school work and try out and play for a university team. So yeah, I was just working in an office and getting ready for the next stage of my life, which was I was actually engaged. So I was planning a wedding. And if you wanna know more about that story, I've made a video about it. I'll link it up atop and you can check that out if you want. Moving past that, um, one day I'm in the office and this woman came in and she was, she seemed like she was ready for like an argument or a battle. So my work, what I did at that time was I worked in a department that rented out sports facilities in my town. And this woman came in, she had a big file with her and she basically put it down on front of my desk and she said, I want to book a facility for roller derby. And I was like, say what? And she definitely, she was talking to the right person because I'd never really seen roller derby or heard much about it, but I knew kind of what it was. And I just knew that it was something really badass that I'd never experienced and never thought would ever happen in my town. So I was like, okay. We ended up renting out a space for roller derby to this person who became the captain coach of the first roller derby league in Chilliwack, which is where I grew up. And I immediately before um, that woman probably even got in her car and drove off out of the parking lot. I called up my best friend who I knew would be game for this. And I said, there's this roller derby league starting up in Chilliwack. We need to do this. Here's the link to a website where you can buy roller skates. And we actually bought them from a Vancouver based roller skate shop, which is still operating today, rollergirl.ca. We bought the the fresh meat package is what it was called and it was a pair of roller skates with all the wheels plates everything all your protective gear helmet and it was sent in the mail and when it arrived me and my best friend put on all the stuff and we got prepared for the tryout to join this league and we literally went out into her street with all of our stuff on except for we both were like we don't need elbow pads like what do you need elbow pads probably for like elbowing people when you're on the track you know but we don't need them for actually for skating so we didn't wear elbow pads we went out on her street started to like skate awkwardly <laughs> down the street 
and both of us totally wiped out, fell backwards on our butts and skinned our elbows so badly. They were bleeding and we were like, oh, that's why you need elbow pads. I had ice skated in my life. I've rollerbladed so much all over my town. I used to rollerblade, but when I put on roller skates, it's such a different feeling. The balance is all completely different. So it took us a long time. We were definitely like Bambi on skates. So we went to tryouts and there's about five or six other women there and we made it onto the team. And um, from there we became members of the board of directors for the league. We started the league. I was the vice president. <laughs> um, my friend was the treasurer. And yeah, we just started the league in Chilliwack and it was so fun and exciting and I just just went head first into it. I went to every single practice. I would skate everywhere. I was skating inside, I was skating outside. I was wearing my skates to like do dishes in the kitchen. I was wearing them to roller skate to my job in the summertime. I was just trying to get as much time on skates as possible to get better at roller skating. And over this time, I started to look more into roller derby my eyes were just opened up to the sport and i realized that actually in vancouver there was a very competitive very well established league it already had four teams and it had and a, and a travel team and they had games happening like bouts where you could go and watch them play against each other and i thought this was just amazing so our little league in chilliwack we didn't even have enough for like a full team at the start we had to recruit for quite a while to get enough women to join the team at the time and so i would spend any free time traveling to Vancouver to watch games from the Vancouver League, playing in Whistler and Squamish and scrimmaging with other teams and just like trying to absorb and get as good as I possibly could get because I had my eyes set on eventually one day playing for the All-Stars, which is the travel team for Vancouver. Right off the bat, when I started understanding the rules of roller derby, I knew I wanted to be a jammer. So the jammer position, if you're not familiar, is the position that's essentially like the ball in any other sport. Um, the, the person who's the jammer wears a special head cover over their helmet and whenever they pass a lap around the track, they score points and they score points for every other body on the other team that they pass. So essentially they're the point scorer, but obviously you can't score points unless you have your teammates supporting you and they're called blockers who either block the other jammer from getting past and also help you sneak through and pass the opposite team. So from the get-go, I was a jammer. I always jammed. I never really blocked at the beginning. And when I decided I was gonna try out for the Vancouver team, I wanted to try out as a jammer. So in 2011, I was living in Chilliwack. I was engaged, I had a full-time job and I was playing roller derby for about four or five months. By February 2012, I decided I was going to try out for the All-Stars, move to Vancouver, quit my job, break up with my partner, and just go for it. And that all might sound super crazy, but I'm such a believer in, in manifesting things that you want in your life. And I just, I knew it was in my, the intuition that I had in my gut was like, you need to go for this. You need to get out of this town. You need to do something so crazy. You need to follow your heart. You need to like, I'd spent my whole life going to school, getting a job, doing all the things that I felt like you were supposed to do as an adult and as a, a human being on this earth. And it just didn't align with me. It didn't feel right. And this sport just ignited a passion and an excitement in me. And I just, I knew I wanted to see absolutely how far I could go. And I was just willing to just do anything I could to make it happen. I kept going to scrimmages. I kept going to different camps that were offered like coaches from all over the lower mainland and on the island in BC. And in, I went to a camp in Seattle in the States and just tried to learn as much as I could from other skaters, other coaches and just skate as much as I could. And I had an opportunity to actually skate with the Faster Pussycats, which was a house team for the Vancouver League and go to Alaska with them to play in a tournament because they were short skaters and I was invited to go and it was just the most thrilling, exciting, honoring, best time ever. And just the community around roller derby is something that I know any skater can attest to, especially I feel so many people had 
have over the years joined the sport that need support, that need a community, that need to escape from what their life is or you know need to be adventurous and try something new and I definitely needed that community of, of skaters at that time in my life and it really helped push me to take risks that I never would have taken if I would have just relied on what I had at home. So by the summer of 2012 I had tried out for the All-Stars, I made it to the team and I also joined the Faster Pussycats um, as a house team player for that year. So I was getting so much experience, so much skating time. I was playing and practicing for two teams and I was now living in Vancouver and I started a new job. And although financially it wasn't the most ideal situation, um, I was just so happy to be playing and skating and roller derby just became my life. Um, I did make the mistake of then dating someone on my team, which at the beginning sounded like such an awesome idea because you're like, oh, we're going to travel together, spend all our free time together. You know, we're going to go all these new places together. We're going to like experience these highs and lows together. But then when you break up with someone and it's a very awful breakup, then you're now traveling with that person, spending all your free time with that person, experiencing all your highs and lows with that person. So that part became throughout my skating career a bit challenging and also I'm sure for our teammates and definitely wasn't the person I am today. So emotionally wasn't as able to handle that situation as well. So that was another thing that was going on during this most amazing part of my life was just also some very, you know, growing moments for me as a human being that, you know, were painful at the time, but now have really benefited me as a person now. <sighs> okay. So when people would ask me about roller derby in my day to day life and what it was like to play it, I would always say basically it was like football on roller skates you had the opposite team especially as a jammer coming at you barreling down on you as blockers and as the sport grew more popular and more people were joining and the level of play got higher and higher you had like ex-rugby players hockey players crossfit people all these kinds of different athletes starting to play roller derby it definitely got more and more challenging and then it would get a little more dangerous so then the rules were developing and evolving with the sport so throughout even my five-year career i noticed such a huge change in the style of the sport when i was a jammer in like 2011 12 the skill set that i needed at that time was just to be sneaky and fast and get as small as i could and then like my blockers would help me get through these little spaces and holes and around and you know i could jump and and that sort of thing but as it progressed and the athletes got stronger on all the teams and all the leagues all, all around the world it got very very challenging so difficult and very physical i basically started having to use my body weight to like slam and into and push through and muscle around people and also had to take huge hits that would send me absolutely flying across the track and at that time I was in a mental space that I was willing to take it and and I enjoyed it and I liked the challenge and the physical challenge but it definitely you know beat me up a lot and I also witnessed a lot of injuries so numerous I can't even count how many people in our own league suffered ankle breaks torn MCLs broken wrists just a lot a lot of injuries and lots of concussions so that's kind of where it started to turn for me. In 2014, there was a World Cup. So at this time, I'm already playing for the Vancouver League. So when it was announced that there was gonna be a World Cup in 2014, I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna play in the World Cup. I wanna play for Team Canada. This is my opportunity to play for Team Canada. I never got to do it in soccer. I'm gonna do it for roller derby. So I just 
again, my whole life was roller derby at that time. All I did was skate and practice and travel and I put all my money into it and I had no money and I was going through personal hardships like breakup and then, you know, having to move. I think at that time I'd moved three or four times because I couldn't afford the place I was at so I had to go somewhere else. And then I got another relationship and that didn't work and I had to move again. I had to sell my car because I could no longer afford to have a car anymore. Kept playing roller derby. It was the one constant in my life that actually brought me joy and excitement and I looked forward to it. So even though things were not working out so great in other aspects of my life, roller derby was there for me. And then fast forward World Cup amazing experience we played in texas and you know i played team argentina which if you haven't seen my previous just right the episode three was about my exchange to argentina i'll link it up here and so that was an amazing experience to play team argentina we played like team germany i think and we ended up playing the u.s at some point and it was just an incredible experience. Again, it was like the highest level of sport I'd ever been able to play. We had amazing coaching. We had, I was just skating with all the best athletes across Canada. It just was so fulfilling for me and absolutely the one of the highlights of my athletic life overall, hands down, it was incredible. We played in a big stadium and it was just everything I could have ever imagined it to be, it was. So then after the World Cup was over, we just kept on focusing as a team, the All-Star Vancouver team, on you know becoming like a number one team in our division. And at this time, it had developed so quickly, the sport, that now there was divisionals and there was just so much more organized play and and we had attended divisionals in different, um, we've been to California and I can't remember wherever else. There was just so much traveling in Virginia we went, but we ended up, Vancouver was able to host the divisional tournament for 2016. And so for 2015, we just focused on being the best team that we could and kept playing and traveling and all of that really looking forward to bringing roller derby to Vancouver and being able to show our city and everywhere else um, the team that we had become because we had been now skating together for uh, some of us for almost five years some longer than that much longer than that I just joined the team later but and we had some new skaters and we had old skaters and it was just such a great team and I loved everybody on that team so much except for maybe my ex <laughs> and yeah so it was, it was a very exciting time. Fast forward to 2016. Our team was really well known for playing our men's team. I don't know if we'd still do. I honestly haven't kept up with roller derby since retirement, but there was a very strong men's league as well in Vancouver. And we liked to play against them because it really challenged us on a physical level. Because at that point, like I said, the, the level of athletes that we were up against, like some of these people were just, just tree trunks we used to say they were tree trunks they were unmovable <laughs> athletes so playing the men really kind of gave us the size and the strength that we needed to try and work and strategize against so we played them a lot and over the years and we uh, we had folks come and watch us play them and you know we would charge a ticket for it so we could raise money for travel all of that so in 2016 it was I think April or May we decided to play them um, as we were ramping up for September of 2016, which was the big divisional tournament in Vancouver, which was so exciting for, on so many levels. I do have a video about this, which I'll also link about my retirement because it's just like a, not a, it's like a, it's a crappy thing to look back on, but basically leading up to that game with the men that we were gonna play, I experienced a few concussions. Once was in practice and then we went and played in a tournament in Oregon and I received another concussion, pretty bad. And then now we were wrapping up to play the men's team. And concussions are something that it's not talked about enough in sports and maybe it is more now, but definitely not at that time and before that. And the, the damage and the long-term symptoms and the recovery time in between, all of that wasn't really 
understood and honestly I would just go to a doctor as many of us did at that time who just wanted to play so bad and honestly I would tell them I was totally fine and I didn't experience any of the symptoms that I was experiencing just so that I could get a doctor's note so I could go back and play because that was kind of the rule that you had to have a doctor's approval if you got injured during practice or play. So I had already bonked my head a few times and you know, once was by my own teammate in practice and once was in a tournament and now we were playing the men and it was just, it's a very physical thing to play the men just because of the size difference and I'm only five feet tall and at that time I think I was like 116 to 120 pounds playing against men that are like 200 pounds and like six foot something. So it was intimidating always to play them but I also we there's rules in derby that protect everybody and also i had my teammates there to support me so we went into that game excited to learn and grow as a team and you know we were doing pretty well i'm not i can't even remember now if we were winning or losing um and we were i think in the second half of the game and i took a hit and it was a big hit and it threw me back and I hit my head very hard, the back of my head on the concrete. And I just remember like holding my head on the ground, knowing that I had hit it way too hard. I, I, I started crying, I think immediately. And I just knew that this was, this was it. I just, I'd hit it way too hard too many times and so I went off to the change room with some teammates and I had a lot of the symptoms of a concussion that are fairly obvious in terms of I started to throw up and just couldn't I was inconsolable very emotional um, crying 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 and I'm not like that generally with <laughs> the sport I played for five years and I didn't cry often about any kind of injury I had you know I when it comes to sports and physical injuries I just like tough it out take some Advil I don't want to let on that I'm in any kind of pain because I just want to play and I just was a complete mess I called my mom just to to tell her that this had happened and I knew her response right away because the truth is my older brother played junior hockey as like a 17, 18 year old and he had received several concussions over his hockey career and also had a very bad head injury that left him unconscious on the ice and he's suffered long-term issues, symptoms of that for the rest of his life, short-term memory loss. Um, he's unable to, to do a lot of the things physically that he used to be able to do. So my family takes it seriously and so do I. And I just, I just knew in my heart that, that like, I, I couldn't work around this. So I did go to a doctor. I was told to, to wait a certain period of time. I think it was about six weeks, four to six weeks. I had severe whiplash as well. I had all kinds of other um, related injuries to the fall because I had fallen back so hard. Just the impact really messed me up on a few different areas and honestly like I blocked this all out of my mind at this point but I remember that finally I was cleared to go to practice and I went to practice with the team before I, we were supposed to leave again for another tournament and this was in July I think June July and I remember putting my skates on putting on my my gear and seeing my teammates skating and just feeling afraid i was scared and i'd never felt that way about roller skating roller derby i'd always been like so confident and so fearless and so ready to to practice and i just remember skating around at the beginning in the warm-up thinking like i don't want anyone to hit me i don't want to fall i don't want to get hurt and i was just scared and i was just and the anxiety was just like, I could, I could barely take a breath. 
So I think I sat out at, towards the end of that practice. Um, I made up whatever excuse and I went home and I just realized that this was kind of the end for me. Uh, it was the most, it just sucked a lot because we had this, this tournament that we were gonna play in meant so much to my team and also to me and I'd been a part of that team for so long and we all had our roles and we really knew each other as skaters and I felt so bad to let my team down but I also knew this was the end of roller derby for me as well and that was really tough to accept and I remember I sat in front of my computer and thought about that email for hours how to word it to my team to my coach to say that I can't go to the tournament and I I'm not going to try out in the next few weeks because we had continuous tryouts for our team to just if there was any new members or if we lost a member that we could bring in someone new and I just was like I can't take that space you guys need to find someone else for that for my spot because I don't think I'm going to make I know I'm not going to make it to divisionals and I remember crying when I sent it and I remember calling my friend Kim my best friend who also played on the team who also was a jammer who we you know we were thick as thieves and skated together for five years straight and it was just a really sucky, sucky thing. So that <laughs> is how it ended. And I still think of all the time about going back. Obviously now the pandemic's happened, I have no idea what's going on in the world of roller derby. Since then, I can say that Chilliwack has done phenomenal things. They started a junior roller derby league. Vancouver started a junior roller derby league. The sports just was growing, growing, growing. There has always been the opportunity, you know, to go coach again. But honestly, the sting of having to retire under the circumstances that I did, it was just too much. I didn't want to be around it. I didn't want to think about it. Um, right after retirement, I started selling a lot of my roller derby stuff, which I sort of regret now because I, you know, it is very special. But at the same time, I felt like I'm not going to use it anymore. I'm not in that world anymore and I want to pass it on to people that will love and, and cherish those those items and and use them for themselves. I look back at roller derby as it saved my soul. I know it's so cheesy. There's a book or a song or something about that, but it did. I was, it literally transformed my life and changed the trajectory of my life to a place that I don't think I ever would have gone if roller derby, I wouldn't have. Roller derby changed my life for the absolute better. There are so many lows during that time, like I said, but so many highs. The, the women that I skated with in Chilliwack, the, the, the people that I met in Vancouver, the growth that I endured as a human because of the challenges involved with, you know, just interpersonal relationships and, you know, pursuing a dream when you, you don't really have the finances or the means to do it and just learning about the grit that I had as an individual and also at the end of the day, learning that to say yes to things that inspire and excite you no matter what obstacles you might see in front of you that that tell you no and to take those risks and it was 12 billion thousand percent worth it I am so happy that I did it I'm so happy in my life now and I just again would never be here unless that coach came into my office and demanded that we make a roller derby league in my town so there's so many people and experiences and moments to thank along the way overall I just thank roller derby and if you have a league in your town and you're thinking about doing it, I say do it 100%. Make sure you practice lots and you have good coaches and you go and experience other teams and other skaters and other communities, but 1000% do it. One of the best chapters of my life, no question. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button if you want to hear more stories like this. I've got episodes one, two, and three if you want to check them out. The bell notification just lets you know when the new video comes out. And I appreciate so much you tuning in today. Have a great day.